Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at The Author Notebook by GLP Creations. It's a product I have reviewed before, but there are some different covers now, and uh, Gavin, the, the uh, creator of these notebooks, was quite excited about those, so he asked me if I could review them, and I said, of course. Now, I would like to point out, to give you full transparency, that this was an expedited review. What does that mean again? That means that I am not paid to do a positive review. That merely means that I am paid to take a product and put it on top of the stack of products that I have to review. And to give you a realistic example, I'm recording this in October 2019, and when I talked to Gavin and he asked me when the review could be up, I said that would be February 2020, because that is the lineup of products I have, that is how many things I have scheduled, etc. So in a case like that, when a company tells me, could we do this faster, I say yes, but then this becomes a paid thing because I have to move around my schedule, I have to do this faster than I usually would, I have to free up like, scheduled time. That's all fine with me, but that will cost you this much. And then they say, okay, or they say, no. Either is fine with me. In this case, Gavin said, okay, please do that so that I can have this review faster. Fine with me, okay? I'd just like to point out, again, and I really don't think we should have this discussion every time this happens, which is not that often to begin with. I am not paid. I am not paid. I am not paid for a positive review. And as you will see, if you choose to watch, I actually have negatives about this product to say, just as I usually would. All that happens is, again, that a product, instead of ending at the bottom of a stack of 50 products to review that I have at any given time, it is put on top of that stack. And that's it. Now, of course, this is a free world, as far as I know, it still is at least. So if you say, I can't handle that, don't watch the video. Very simple. If you do watch the video, I can tell you right now that there will be a special bonus for you at the end of this video. But then you have to watch the whole thing. Now, for those of you who have stuck around, welcome. Let's talk about the... GLP Creations, the author notebook. Now, I have reviewed this notebook before. Uh, here is one that I have used extensively. I'm not going to leave through this on camera because I will be honest, there is definitely some profanity in this. Uh, the reason for that is that I test a lot of pens in there and sometimes I just copy things, uh, quotes and such, and such from movies as I watch them. Um, I very much enjoy the author notebook and the reason for that is that it's a very handy format and it's quite light. So I find myself taking this product to a lot of pen meets, for example, and it's also Tomoe River. So let's, of course, I'm going to do a writing sample, uh, which is probably the, the more important thing for you to make up your mind on this product. But before I do that, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about the notebook. So I, I thought Gavin, when he said he had some new covers, he was going to send me one. Uh, in fact, I received no less than seven uh, of these notebooks, so thank you very much. That is very generous of you. What's the, what's the author notebook all about? Well, it is a very interesting uh, size because it's an A5 notebook, but it is what GLP calls A5 Slim. So whereas normal, I'm just looking at my notes here because I don't know the numbers from the top of my head, a normal A5 notebook would be 21 centimeters by 14.8 centimeters. The A5 Slim, uh, or this format that GLP uses, is uh, 21 by 13 and a half. So 13 and a half versus 14.8 centimeters. Now I can imagine, maybe especially if you are not used to um, these types of uh, metric numbers, this is a Kunisawa spiral bound notebook, very simple. This is full A5, and this is an author notebook. So let me make sure I actually line up the paper properly. That's about the distance. So this little strip, that is how much more paper you would have in an actual A5 size versus an author size, that A5 slim. What do you get in there? You get 192 pages, and that is always confusing. So is that sheets or is that pages? No, that is 192 pages. In other words, you can write on 192 pages. You see that? That is 192. That is the bottom corner. The pages are numbered, which I very much enjoy. And that is the last sheet you can write on. So that is the actual page count. The paper, very important in a notebook, is 68 grams per square meter. Tomoe River, the famous Tomoe River that everybody loves, 
and I will be honest, I have kind of come to love it a bit as well. Uh, 68 grams per square meter, that is the slightly thicker Tomoe River, and that is important. I will come back to that when I discuss my likes and dislikes later. Tomoe River is considered by many people to be a very pleasant paper. It's uh, quite thin, but it has very good properties. It doesn't make pens bleed, so you, you, when you write on it, you don't get, get bleeding, the inks are spreading over the page. There isn't much ghosting, so you don't see writing on the other side of the page. I'm going to test all this and I will show you, okay? Now, what do you get when you purchase it? Well, you get your notebook. I've just taken this one out, so I'll just take that. Well, you get a little sort of uh, uh, yeah, very light cardboard sleeve, which actually has a table of contents, which I thought was a nice touch. It also indicates what type of ruling you have in there because there is lined clear and there is dot grid. Um, that, that, that's pretty much it. And it has some information on it, like the number of pages, etc. But that's, that's what you get. You have these fancy colors now because it used to be just black, right? Like, like this one. And now you have other colors, like this brown, which I kind of like, sort of a saddle brown. It is fake leather. Uh, GLP calls it leatherette. Right, uh, that's the, the, the cover, but I'll be honest, from a distance especially, I, I could look at this and think, hey, that actually looks like leather. So it's, it is, in my mind, quite nice. What else do you get? Well, you get a cute little uh, uh, thank you uh, note card in your notebook. You get a sheet of blotting paper, which is quite nice. A lot of people keep that, and when they have written on a page, they're ready to leave. They carefully put that in, close the page, and you won't have your ink end up on the other uh, still blank page, which I think is very nice. You get a first <coughs> first page which has, which is not on my river, but has space for your name and address, and then you get a table of contents, uh, which is quite extensive. One, two, three, you have three pages of that, and then you start on your Tomoe River, which in this case is uh, a dot grid. <coughs> now, what I would like to show you is at the top, you have the old, the, sorry, the old dot grid uh, uh, they used to do, and at the bottom you have the new dot grid. And as you can see, the new dot grid is uh, crisper. The dots are crisper, so I very much like that uh, improvement on the new versions. And finally, all the way at the, the final page, we have a little pocket. And last but not least, you get a bookmark and a little rubber band to keep the whole notebook shut. <clears throat> okay, I think that covers all the features. So, you know what, I'm just going to leave that one out so I can uh, do a quick scribble in that. The price? $27.99. We'll come back to that when we talk about likes and dislikes, but I think this was more than enough. You want to see how this thing performs. So let's do some writing, and then I'll come back for those things I like about this notebook and don't like so much about this notebook. Let's get started. Okay, so let's look at the actual practicalities of this notebook. I have talked you through all the features. Uh, what I would like to point out is, first of all, I'm sorry you see the uh, feet of my tripod. It's the way it is. Otherwise, I can't zoom out enough to show you the notebook. So, here we have the notebook, something I would like to point out. It's actually two things. First of all, it does lie flat. Um, especially with the first page, yeah, that's a bit of an issue, but once you, you get a number of pages in, it does lie flat, and uh, I, I, I do appreciate that, so that is a, a nice touch. Finally, I would like to point out, uh, before we start on our writing, uh, that I got this note from Gavin, which I have saved, here it is, um, I think we should all agree that Gavin has used the absolutely most beautiful ink you could possibly use as BRE Brown, which of course I recognized immediately. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. Now, let's, let's look at some, uh, some, some writing here. So I have made a lineup of pens and uh, I'm going to, uh, to, to start writing and I really wish I could move around my, my tripod a bit more, but I can't. So, we're gonna do my, I'm going to do my best. At this point, I'll try to zoom in a little bit more for you. So, here we have, I'm just going to sort of put a code in. This would be a fine nib, conid, bulk filler, king size, fine, 14 karat nib, and the ink is um, 
uh, Pelican uh, Star Ruby, so it's the Edelstein. Uh, this clearly is one of the uh, dot grid notebooks. I will show you the other paper styles in just a second. I'm not going to write in all three. I'm sorry my handwriting is, is terrible, but I am reaching around the tripod, so please, please bear with me. In the normal pen reviews I have a, 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 a notepad that can fit in between the legs of the tripod, but this, this one does not, so I'm, I'm sorry. This is how it is. I also do a, like just put some ink on the page like this to see if that bleeds through at all. As I said, I won't use all three types of notebook, but I will show you the different kinds of paper. It's all the same Tomoe River, so you will get the same results on all uh, paper. Here we have a medium nib. Uh, this is an Enso XS pocket fountain pen. This is the Titanium Limited Edition for the record. Uh, the ink, no idea. This is a black cartridge that came with it, but I thought it would be fun to kind of have a, a generic cartridge uh, in this overview as well to see how that would uh, fare on this paper. And of course there will be a photograph of the uh, writing on my website. Okay, here we have an Opus 88 Omar. This is the very pretty, in my mind, demonstrator. Uh, this is a broad nib steel. I didn't want to only do gold. Right here we have some steel. Uh, this is the uh, Esbiary Brown ink. Again, my handwriting, bear, bear with me. Oh, and I was going to do a little ink bits, wasn't I? Sorry, I have to revisit that. So that was S. Beery Brown, and then we have the black cartridge. Then I thought maybe a stub, so here we have the Leonardo uh, Smeraldo, uh, this is the Furore model. So this would be a stub, and the ink is Visconti Turquoise. Oh, I could just move my hand here, couldn't I? Oh, that is a lot better. I'm sorry. Uh, Visconti Turquoise is my favorite turquoise ink. And then I thought we would play around a little bit to really kind of push this uh, this this notebook. Here we have a Wing Song 601. Uh, this is a uh, food and nib that a kind viewer sent to me. The ink is uh, Waterman, I think tender purple, whatever they call it. Their 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 standard purple. And a food and nib is nice and broad. Right, I'll try to use it in a low angle so that we get a nice broad stroke there. Then, why not, Classic Pens LB5 with the cross point nib and um, uh, the, this is a Mont Blanc Corn Poppy. I'll use that at a low angle too. so that we really get a nice wide line and broad this definitely is and of course I forgot the food and ink splash splash? I don't even know what that is anyway, so here we go and then finally uh, should you want to use this for calligraphy uh, there is of course the option to use a 6mm Pilot Parallel which just has Pilot Black in a cartridge in there and um, okay that is not lined up but again I am reaching around a tripod so you'll have to forgive me uh, you know what we'll make this fun 
There. We have balance. The darkness and the light. Now, I uh, wish I had started with these really wet nibs because of course now we have to wait until this is dry. So, uh, the first thing you will notice in my mind is that there is no feathering on this paper. Yeah, it's Tomoe River. So even if you go with a very, very wide and broad nib, I'll try to keep this as still as I can so as not to make you, make you nauseous, there's no feathering whatsoever. And there is, of course, a reason that people love uh, Tomoe River so much. That is an amazing feature of this, this paper. Oops, sorry, I'm so sorry. I'll zoom out. Now let's, I think we can flip this page. Where do we have? Oh, blot, blot it. Okay, so here's how you would use this, right? You, you say, okay, I'm ready to go. You put that in, you close your notebook and you go off. You have your nice elastic band, which has just the right amount of tension too. I really like these. And there you go. Okay. So now I open this up again. I will have blotted the writing that I needed to blot, right? And I flip the page and I don't see any bleed through, right? Even with the very wet writing, there may be some ghosting, some, or what's also known as shade through or show through. You can see a bit of the writing on the side, but there's no bleeding, there's no like little dots of ink that have dripped through the page. So there you have it. So this would be, I'm just up close, that's the dot grid. Uh, then let's see what else we have. We have a line in this pretty red which is a nice line, I like that. It's not too obtrusive. Uh, then I have another line, which is this nice dark blue color, but that's lined as well. I'm also showing you the colors, right? Uh, then we have a green, and this green is lined too. This, by the way, is a very nice feeling. That almost feels like leather, it's very uh, smooth. I like that. Uh, another line, right? So that's the green. I'll try to put pictures of all the colors on my website. Uh, here we have a dot grid. Uh, this is, I think it is, I don't know if this is supposed to be black or gray, uh, because this is my old black one and this looks grayer to me. Uh, so this would be another dot grid. I have shown you, of course, the brown, which is dot grid. Then we have this nice, what should we call this, teal, maybe? Uh, which is also dot grid. And the final one I have to show you is what well, I don't know, you see, this is the actual black. And what I've always liked about the black, by the way, is this little sort of orange highlight that, that's just a nice touch. And this is blank, so there is no uh, ruling in this at all. Blank, which is, I know, I know a lot of artists uh, like that. So there you have it. These are all the notebooks. Let's talk about what I like and what I don't like about the author. Let's get started. So, what do I like? What do I not like about the GLP Creations The Author Notebook? Overall, I like this notebook a lot. I have had a few, and I have really found myself enjoying using it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I find the size very nice. I think A5 is a nice size. The advantage of the A5 Slim is that it is just a little bit slimmer as a notebook. I know that some people do not like that size. People in the past have commented on that, saying that they didn't really enjoy it. I have had no issues with it. That, that about, what is it, centimeter and a half or something that you lose is really not that big a deal in my mind. And that slimness makes it fit into a lot of bags, which I have found very convenient. As I said, I have taken this notebook to a lot of pen knees and such. And then this is a very convenient uh, uh, notebook to use because it's slim, it's also fairly light, it's <clears throat> pretty thin, it can easily slip it into a bag, which I enjoy. Another thing that I really enjoy is it opens flat, and um, you have to fold it open a little bit for that to happen, but this is a brand new one, right? Um, flat, lies flat, which, which I enjoy, and which you will have seen in the uh, writing sample. I like the small extras, blotting sheet, always useful. Very useful to, as I said earlier, to you do your writing, you put the blotting sheet in, you close your notebook, you close it with the little uh, elastic band, and you're good to go. Your writing will not soil the um, uh, page on the other side. One second. Sip, okay. 
So I like that. And as the bookmark, very useful because you know exactly where you are in your notebook, which I've always appreciated. And the back pocket is useful. To be honest, I don't find myself using it, but I know that there are people who carry more stuff around and then it is, it is useful to, to have that feature. I like the table of contents and I really, really like the page numbering. I've always enjoyed that uh, in, in Leuchtturm 1917 notebooks, uh, with, which do that, and Moleskine notebooks that do not typically do that. So I've, I've always liked the, uh, the page numbering. Now what about things I don't like so much? Well, of course, there are things I don't like so much either. And having used these notebooks for quite a while, as I said, I've been using them for a long time, not, not just for this review. I've been using these things for months and months. Um, I personally have not found a lot of things I dislike about it. However, what I will say is the price is relatively high. Uh, 2799 US. Let's, let's, for the sake of argument, let's call that about $30, right? Um, depending on where you are, there may be some import, etc. But $27.99, there's also shipping, right? So let's, let's f for sake of like convenience, let's call it tw about $30. For $30, in my mind, you get a very nicely made notebook, and there are nice details uh, in, in the notebook. Like the pocket, there's the, uh, the, the, the bookmark, all those things I've talked about. However, having said that, $30 for 192 pages is rather a lot. I have recently reviewed this video, and I, I don't know if that is up at the, at the, the time that I am uh, shooting this, but here we have an Elia Note journal. Uh, this was sent to me by Elia Note uh, in Malaysia, and these notebooks have uh, the thinner, that's why I wanted to, to, to point that out at the, at the start of the video, the thinner Tomei River paper, which I think is 52 grams per square meter, as opposed to the 62 grams per square meter that the author uses. That's a much thinner paper, so you will get some more ghosting, but you don't, in my mind, still don't really get any bleed through, right? Now, this notebook is maybe a little simpler, Maybe a little simpler, it doesn't have the pocket in the back, it, it doesn't have a bookmark. It has a thinner fake leather cover, right, than the, than the author has, it's a bit, bit thicker. But this has no less than 496 pages of Tomori River, and again, because it's thinner paper, you will see there is not a huge difference in thickness between these two notebooks. But the Elia note is $30. 496 pages. <laughs> that is almost 300 pages more than the author, and they're the same price. However, as I said, the Elia has the somewhat thinner paper and doesn't have the accoutrement. There's no blotting sheet, there's no elastic closure, there's no bookmark, there's no pocket in the back. But if you're looking for just the notebook, just paper, and nothing else, I would say the Elia is a pretty stiff competition. If you look for something that maybe has some more refined features, I think the author is great. At the end of the day, it's up to you. And you have to make up your own mind and see what suits your needs best. Because another thing is, the Elia is also quite a bit heavier overall, and it's Actual A5 size, by the way, in case you should wonder, so it does have that extra centimeter and, and, and pocket change millimeters. So there is that. I would like to say a very kind thank you to Gavin, and uh, because sending me seven of these, that's, that's very, very generous. Uh, I appreciate that. I hope this review was useful. Now, as I said, because this was an expedited review and I got paid, I think you need to get some bang for your buck. So, para bailar la bamba, para bailar la bamba, se necesito una poca de gracia, una poca de gracia pa mi patilla, y arriba, y arriba, y arriba, y arriba, por ti seré, por ti seré, yo no soy marinero. Yo no soy marinero, soy capitán, soy capitán, soy capitán. Bam la bamba, bam la bamba, bam la bamba, bamba. Now wasn't that worth your buck? I thought it was. If that is not bang for your buck, I don't know what is.
So thank you very much for staying with me, sticking with me, watching my review. I hope this was useful. And the single will be on iTunes very soon. Bye!